we're going to look at different classes of functions. Now, a constant function is the first one, which is an example of this one here. Everything here is always the same height. It never changes, never goes up, never goes down. Since it never changes, it's considered constant. Remember we had said a direct variation was a special linear function that goes through the origin. So if it's a line that goes through the origin, it's a direct variation. An even more special direct variation or even more special line is the identity function where it goes through the origin but always has a slope of 1. We also have the greatest integer function which are the step functions that we had talked about earlier in the course. Then we also have absolute value. We said absolute value is always in the shape of a V, and then we have quadratic. Quadratic are always in the shape of a parabola, and maybe be a parabola going up or a parabola going down. And then in chapter 8 we did look at sideways parabolas, but for the most part we're looking at parabolas going up or down here. We also have the square root function, which is kind of like a top half of a parabola going sideways. Now, whether it's top half or the bottom half, it's still a square root function, and that's considered your parent function. You also have rational functions. Rational functions, remember, typically have vertical asymptotes, or they have holes, one or the other, and sometimes they have both in the same problem. Here's another example of a rational function, one over here, where we have a hole. Now, a special rational function is your inverse variation. Inverse variation where you have some number divided by x. You don't have anything added or subtracted to the top or the bottom. It's just some number divided by x. If it's in that form, it's a special rational function called an inverse variation. So we now need to take a look at all those different ones above and identify which one each one of these happens to be. This first one here is not linear, so you know it's not a direct variation identity or linear. It's got a curve and it's opening sideways. And it ends up being just like what we were talking about right up here, so it's a square root parent function. This one here, since we have a hole in it, you know that if it has a hole, it's got to be rational. Also, if it has a vertical asymptote, it's rational. Here we have a toy rocket that's being launched and the formula is given to us by negative t squared plus 80t and we want to know which one of these graphs is going to work. Well we know this is linear however when you look at your function here is it linear? We would say no because it has an exponent of 2. This one here is a rational function you'd have a vertical asymptote here Typically, this would be going off to the left, but it's stopping because you can't have a negative time. We'd have no vertical asymptote for this problem. You should realize that since we have a squared term right here, that it ends up being quadratic, and that all quadratics are the shape of a parabola, which is the center one. You now need to identify the type of function this is, and then you need to graph it. Hopefully, just by looking at this right here with these two straight bars, you're saying, oh, that has to be an absolute value graph. Now, it's your absolute value is always the shape of a V. And in this case, it's going to be moved three units down because the minus three is afterwards. Now, if we have this, you can always go ahead and make yourself a T-chart to graph any of these functions. And then choose several values for x. And figure out the corresponding y values and plot your points. But you're going to get the shape of a v. And since it's absolute value up here, you know you need to choose enough points to get that v shape it would look like this. Now here, on this one on the right, since we have this, most of you are going to recognize that that pink thing is an or a square root. 
So you know you need to end up having a square root function as your uh, parent function. So we're going to have a square root function here. The question is, what's it going to be looking like? Well, we know we can't use negatives here. So only what's on the inside has to be positive or zero. So when you make your t-chart, you know you can't have negatives. Oh, that's a nice diagonal line. Did not intend that. It's supposed to be straight down. So I'm going to just start choosing non-negatives. And then we can go ahead and plug those values in. So that we can go ahead and fill out our t-chart. So you plug in 0. 0 times 4 is 0. Square root of 0 is 0. Minus 2. And so then you get out of minus 2. Plug in 1. 1 times 4 is 4. Square root of 4 is... 2 and 2 minus this 2 is 0. And then you go ahead and plug in 8 and 3 and 4 and keep doing that and plot those points. Now when you plug in some of these here they may not work out nice so then just get the decimals. Plot all those points and you get this shape. Starts out here at 0, negative 2 and kind of curves up and off to the right. So we need to go ahead and graph this. It's already given to you over here, but let's review. This goes back to section 3. Remember that the top is y plus 3. And by the way, this is a rational function because you have a variable on the bottom. So you know that you're going to end up having either a whole or a vertical asymptote. Since this is the same on the top and the bottom, you know you're going to have a hole. What causes that factor, the x plus 3, to be 0 is when x is equal to a negative 3. So you know you're going to have a hole at negative 3. But let's take a look at what we have left. Well, what we have left is just this, x minus 3. So you know you have a slope of 1, and a y-intercept being negative 3. So we could start out at negative 3, Slope of 1, up 1, over 1, up 1, over 1, up 1, over 1, up 1, over 1, and same, going the other way. But I'm not going to put a point here, because remember, that's when our x is, uh, oh, that spot's in the wrong spot. That should be down here. And so that I'll have to fix. So it should look like this. I had my hole underneath the negative 2. My hole should be underneath where it is x is being negative 3. So x being negative 3 should be a hole. Really, there's also the line continuing on this way. It's just that the graph doesn't continue on down that far. My grid doesn't. But it's just one straight line with a break in it right here.